Hi, my name is Krista. I'm the founder and CEO from Doctors Into Light Resources, and we provide hope, inspiration, education, and resources to those who might have this is to their family friends. Today, we have Leslie White with us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And she is a licensed marriage and family therapist who has experience working with first-time parents. She has worked closely with women suffering from in in silence from from prenatal and postpartum depression, anxiety, and parent-child attachment struggles. Her experience includes working with parents and their children between zero and four years of age. So let's start out. So okay. how does a person know if they need therapy? You know, I think that's a really good question. Um, when I was looking at it, because you gave me ahead of time, um, <laughs> I think, you know, it's different for every person. I think that um, for some, it's it's just not, they just don't feel right. Mm -hmm. They maybe feel stressed or they're feeling depressed or they're feeling anxious. And um, they may feel like, oh, maybe if I talk to somebody, that might be a good thing. Um, sometimes they don't know. And sometimes it's family or friends that might suggest mm -hmm. Maybe you should go talk to somebody. Maybe you need just a little extra support to help you through what you're going through. So um, I don't think there's like a clear-cut answer for that no. one. It just kind of depends. It's a good no. question, though. Yeah. So people really screwed up there. I know I was. I didn't seek help for five months. Mm -hmm. So um, can you explain therapy and client confidentiality? Because like, I know that's a big question. Sure, sure. So I do agree with you. I think that a lot of people are scared to go to therapy because they don't know what is it going to be like. Um, I have so much that I want to share. Where will that go? Will they tell other therapists? Will they tell their family, their friends, whatnot? Um, and I think they want to be, you know, told and reassured that what you share with me will stay here. And mm -hmm. so I think as a therapist and all therapists, um, when clients come in for the first time, we sit down in the office here and we talk about what um, therapy is, what to expect, and then we also talk about confidentiality. And I talk to them about what you share with me is confidential. Mm -hmm. But um, being a therapist, you know, we have ethical guidelines and, and things we have to follow as well. So there are things that um, limit us with confidentiality so if if they were to harm their self or someone else um, or a child abuse we would have to um, break that confidence mm. um, I will say from doing what I do it doesn't happen all that often but I do try to um, talk with clients about yeah. kind of like oh this is one of those things that let's let's talk about this mm. but I think yeah clients should know that when you come in here um, what you're sharing with me is gonna stay with with you and I right in this room Okay. The only time I feel like um, what well, that's not the case also too would be if they sign a release of information and say they are working with a psychiatrist or they're working with somebody else that um, as their therapist I can help support them, mm -hmm. then that's something we would do. But I also feel like I talk to clients about even if you sign a release with me to help support you with that other professional, it's not to like chit chat about all kinds of things. It's like what's the task here? What? Yeah. How can we best support yeah. you? So that Great. So, um, how does a new parent know when to go to therapy? Ooh, that's another good one. Um, that's a tough one because I don't think parents always know. Um, I would say in over my 17 years of working with first time parents, uh, it's, it's tough being a parent because there's no instruction manual. There's no, this is what you do, and we just, it's not always natural for us. Mm -hmm. We don't always know what we're doing. Um, I think when it, when you start to feel like you're getting more stressed out, you're getting more frustrated with your child, maybe if you're feeling, again, kind of what we talked about before, depressed or anxious or feeling kind of off, um, then that's maybe a good time mm -hmm. to look into what are extra supports and maybe look at it that way. Mm -hmm. Great. So, new mothers can get into this called postpartum depression or anxiety. Mm -hmm. So, explain how this can occur in a person's life. So, I always, I know you and I were just talking a little bit ago about mental illness mm -hmm. and trying to help with um, how much stigmatism there is around mental illness. And I will say for me as a therapist, I don't always 
I don't really use that word mental mm. illness because I feel like so many people um, get pretty scared off by it and think, oh, that must be something's wrong with me or, I'm, you know, I'm crazy or this or that. So postpartum, um, we talk about postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, there's postpartum OCD, psychosis, there's kind of all these little things here, but um, we don't really know what causes them. We know that obviously postpartum depression and anxiety can happen when you're pregnant and can happen after. Um, if you have any sort of um, depression or anxiety before pregnancy, you have a pretty good chance that you might experience it um, mm. during pregnancy. If during pregnancy you have it, um, there's a really good chance. I don't know if it's as up to as high as up to 50% likelihood that you'll have some sort of postpartum depression um, or anxiety after. So I think um, the biggest thing I have found is when I work with um, first-time parents in another program I do and then also in my practice is if they have any kind of anxiety or depression um, during the pregnancy or after, we talk about let's kind of prepare and plan for what could happen. Mm -hmm. That, you know, okay, so if we start to feel these feelings like postpartum de depression has, what can we do to put supports in place so that you don't get overwhelmed, so you don't get... Um, scared by what you're feeling so letting family members know or making sure that they come in on a more regular basis mm -hmm. so I think really just trying to plan ahead if we can but that doesn't always happen yeah. but great so what can a person do if they experience these symptoms as a new mom so I think if they experience these new symptoms um, first off I think it can be really scary mm -hmm. because um, sometimes having, uh, well, not sometimes, but experiencing depression or anxiety or um, we talk about with the OCD, like if you have intrusive thoughts, these kind of unwanted thoughts that you don't want, um, it can be really scary and you're not quite sure what to do with it. And I think, um, first off, I think it's important to connect with, you know, mm -hmm. maybe family or friends or your um, gynecologist, your obstetrician, if um you're feeling like something's not right. And um, some people will just go to a general practitioner too. But I think the biggest thing is to try to let people know because I think one of the biggest things that I do is to let people know that you're not alone, that mm -hmm. a lot of women suffer from these different kinds of symptoms. But the sooner you can get in and talk with somebody, possibly medication, the sooner you might be able to feel better mm -hmm. and get more of a handle of it. Great. So, men can get mental illness too, so how can men differ than women in those symptoms? Sure, so I know I was kind of looking too. Um, with men, I know there's basically, um, they want to say one in ten men can experience like a paternal postpartum depression. And then if their spouse or their partner experiences um, postpartum depression or anxiety, then there can be like a 50% chance mm -hmm. likelihood. Which if we think about that, um, you know, first off, if you have a child, that's kind of a big event, big life change in a marriage or a relationship. And then I think for men too, we know that men don't talk about their depression or if they're feeling anxious. Um, and I feel like when I've worked with men, they'll talk about kind of those feelings of, now I gotta be a provider, I gotta make sure my family's safe, I gotta make sure I have enough money, I gotta make sure that I'm a good father. Mm. Um, so I think there's so many things that kind of run through their mind, but I think too, um, we know men don't talk about it. So then we might see like more angry, more aggressive behavior with them. They might be more irritable. Um, you might see an increase in their substance use. Um, and then they can have symptoms like, um, women with crying and sadness, or you might see kind of a difference too would be, um, they might work long hours. Mm -hmm. So... I think um, there's a lot of conversation that's being had now about men and depression mm -hmm. and being a new dad and what that means for them. And so I think um, it's kind of a cool time because I feel like there's more attention being paid to how do we support men and women because I feel like for um, over 17 years of doing this, I have thought about the guy, but a lot of times we've been like, okay, how do we best support mom? She's the one suffering right now, but yeah. not realizing dad is as well. Mm. So if a child is having difficulties with separation anxiety, what would you recommend to the parents? 
So I think when it comes to um, separation anxiety with children, um, I feel like a lot of my work has been grounded in, um, and I see your next question too, is around yeah. attachment. And so I feel like um, what I feel like we know and is that um, how a child is reacting um, and I always talk to my families about this because it's kind of the opposite of what we think. But when a child is more clingy and having a harder time getting away from you or going away from you, a lot of times we, we misinterpret it as, oh, they're spoiled. Um, oh, they get everything they want or they're just naughty. But truly what we know with research is that um, children who are probably, who are clingy are probably not getting their needs met. So I feel like the best thing we can do as parents would be try to sit down and listen to them and talk to them. And again, it depends on their age, kind of finding out what they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. Why are they sad or having a hard time going away? Um, trying to be more present with them emotionally and physically. Because I think what, you know, what we know is that kids need parents to be predictable, consistent, be able to um, nurture them, to play with them. And I feel like... Um, kids know what they need we just have to know how to read their cues mm -hmm. and so I think if you find you try to do this and you you can't figure out what's going on then I would probably try to connect with a therapist or sometimes a doctor because there's other stuff pediatrician maybe there's something else going on but yeah. okay yeah so explain the parent and child attachment and when is it a problem so this is like a super big question and so I'm just going to do kind of a, just a okay. little piece of it because it's Attachment is such a big area, but um, what we know about attachment is that with parent-child attachment, it starts during pregnancy. Mm -hmm. It's something that um, we hope that parents can start to bond while they're pregnant and then after the baby's here. So it's like from pregnancy through life, that attachment and that just that connection. And we know that as human beings, we look for connections in relationships, and that's what we need in order to survive mm -hmm. and so with parents and children um, I think one of the things that I was thinking of with this question was when a parent is having a tough time with their kiddo again kind of goes with the one before would be looking at what's happening in our life right in our lives right now is there extra stress is there something that's changed is there something at school is there something with maybe mom or dad and so trying to figure out um, what is going on and then how to best support them and sometimes um, it's just again going back to being more available and more present for the child emotionally and physically and then sometimes it is something more where you have to go to therapy and maybe sit down and do some play therapy or sit down mm -hmm. with a therapist either for yourself as a parent because we know parenting is really difficult and sometimes we need just that support and guidance and a lot of times then, if we get the support we need, we're able to better support our kids. Yeah. So thank you so much for uh, talking to me. So you can subscribe to my channel um, and you can watch other interviews with other mental health practitioners. Thanks. Thank you.